Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the council meeting of April the 13th, 2021. And be it resolved that the agenda of the regular for April 13th, 2021 be adopted. Mover? Henry Siemens. Here a seconder. Marvin. Thank you, Marvin. Any additions to the agenda? Hearing none, are they all in favor? And that is carried. Be it resolved that the minutes of the regular council meeting of March 23rd, 2021 be adopted. Mover? Karina. Oh. Karina and Don, thank you. Any questions or errors or omissions from those council minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? And that is carried. Going to correspondence, we have a letter here from the Manitoba Agriculture Hall of Fame indicating when their Zoom meeting is Wednesday, April 21st at 11 a.m. Uh, we have not attended that uh, recently, a very rare occasions actually. But uh, just for your notice, in case you're interested in attending, you could Zoom in. That's the ATM. Next one outlines the rebate summary from the WARS rebate program. And the city of Winkler this year's numbers are 66, 60, can I read 66,724.88. And my only question there was, uh, Jody, do you know if that's more or less than normal? It's or? within 2,000. That's last year's. Yep. Okay. Similar. The previous year before that was very similar as well. Okay, any questions regarding the rebate? Certain, I think it's included in our budget numbers anyway, so. Okay, then we'll go on to the accounts payable. Be it resolved that the accounts payable of a million and $12,655.47 as approved by the finance committee be approved for payment. Mover. Henry Siemens. Seconder. Andrew. And any questions regarding the check register in regards to the payables? Hearing none, all in favor? And that is carried. Be it resolved that the tax levy bylaw number 2267-21 be given second reading. Mover. Henry Siemens. Do I have a seconder? Andrew. Thank you. Any questions or concerns regarding that bylaw? Hearing none, all in favor? And that is carried. Be it resolved that the tax levy bylaw number 2267 21 be given third and final reading. Mover? Marvin. Marvin and Don, thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, and that is carried. Be it resolved that the Finance Committee minutes, meeting minutes of March 26, 2021 be adopted. Mover? Henry Siemens. Seconder? Andrew. Any questions regarding the Finance Committee minutes? Hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to take a look at, at David's suggestion in terms of how we handle mm -hmm. our debt moving forward. Yep. I think it's a really good approach that long term is going to bring significant results for us. Obviously, that decision will be made by all of council, but the Finance Committee would strongly recommend that that is the right route to go. Yep. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to commend the, our, our people, David. Uh, in this case specifically for doing a thorough evaluation of this that makes it quite easy to make the decision. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, numbers certainly bear it out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? And that is carried. Clover Creek tender results, whereas the tenders for Clover Creek under the tender contract number 21-05B were received as follows. And you can see the list there and the award being given to Bituminix for 
for 864,525 which is uh, significantly below the uh, original mm -hmm. estimate that was in our budget. So it's good to see those favorable tenders coming in. Yeah, there, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, hopefully the, the rest of them throughout the year will come in favorable. Just read on Stymac Online that Stymac's one project went considerably over budget. So I was getting worried whether that's going to be the new trend this year. So hopefully not. It was the engineer that uh, designed it. That... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Scott, for being pretty accurate. <clears throat> Dwayne and Patrick are the ones Awesome. Good job. Yeah. Pass it on. Therefore, be it resolved that the tender be awarded to Bituminix for the low bid of 864525 including PST, excluding GST. Mover? Marvin. Seconder? Michael. Any questions or further comments? Other than it's really nice to see a number of bids, including a couple of local ones, and some quite aggressive bids. So very nice to see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right, if there's no more, all in favor? And that is carried. Therefore, be it resolved that the attached utilities arrears be transferred to the respective tax rolls. Mover? Don. Seconder? Karina. Any questions regarding these utility reserves? Are you res are you the utility, unpaid utility bills? Is a question we off, often ask. I'm not sure, Scott, if you have the answer, or uh, is it significantly different, or is it pretty much in line? It's about twenty percent less than last year. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Good. All right. Thank you. All in favor? And that is carried. Be it resolved that the March 2021 fire report be received for information. Mover? Michael. Seconder? Don. Any questions or comments regarding the fire report? Barb, I'm sure you're happy for the rain or the snow. We, we are. It is amazing how a lawn that you mowed last fall would creep away on you this spring. Uh, if the way it, as dry as it was, and that's how a number of our fires started, mm -hmm. it went across the mowed lawn from last year. Yeah. So, so it was just extremely dry. So yeah. this is very, well, everybody's very happy for this. So this rain, uh, there's snow and moisture. Okay. <clears throat> no? no other questions? All right. All in favor? And that is carried. Be it resolved that the March 2021 water and sewer reports be received for information. Mover? Andrew. Seconder? Marvin. Any questions regarding the reports? Scott? Yeah. Um, you can just pull up the reports so I can point to it. Hopefully it's showing in this one already. Um, if you go to the last page here, um, you're going to start seeing on the top graph on this one, a bit of a deviation uh, from the PVWC uh, purchases. We're trying to purchase more in spring here uh, before PVWC has to ramp up their production mm -hmm. for irrigators. And then we're going to try and start purchasing again earlier in September uh, in anticipation for that extended outage uh, for George uh, Avenue Reservoir, because we're not gonna be able to take water from Latalier uh, when that project starts. So we're trying to get about where we usually are uh, by the end of November, by the beginning of October. And so then it's gonna sit flat line for, for a month and a half to two months so that we can complete our purchases for the year. So you'll see that deviate and then it will come back by the end of the year. So. Okay. Thanks Scott for that clarification. Any other questions? I was seeing in Pemina Valley online that there's some drastic uh, steps already being taken in Morden as far as uh, conservation because of the level of the lake. So yeah. hopefully this rain and snow will replenish that as well. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All in favor? And that is carried. Be it resolved that the MSTW <coughs> meeting minutes and reports for February 17th, 2021 be received for information. Mover? John. Seconder? Andrew. Any questions or comments regarding those minutes or reports? We had a meeting in uh, beginning of April, uh, just an executive meeting, and Glenn was said for March, um, or the first quarter of this year, there's twice as many permits uh, from what was last year. That's great. So the that's dollar value or just number of permits? Number of permits. And oh. dollar value is higher too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I don't necessarily see that on the report though. Well, this is this like we had far. an exec meeting mm -hmm. uh, beginning of April. Mm -hmm. So that was... For the that first was, quarter? That information wasn't on here. Okay. See, so this just goes to the end of February. Right. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. All in favor? And that is carried. Planning committee, be it resolved that the open and in-camera planning committee meeting minutes for March the 11th be adopted. Mover? Henry Siemens. Seconder? Gone. Any questions regarding those minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? And that is carried. Be it resolved that the South Central Regional Library meeting minutes of March 18th, 2021 be received for information. Mover? Marvin. Seconder? Michael. Any questions or comments? Things are moving along nicely. We really are fortunate to have all those hardworking people there. That's for sure. It's awesome to see those numbers. It's interesting. Miami was in, his, the library was part of that new building that they built their council chambers and so on. I don't right. know how, how many of you have had a chance to be in there? Yeah. It 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 is too small. Now. <laughs> it's not that So it's wonderful to see a small community like that be so actively involved mm -hmm. and, and make use of that. It's mm -hmm. great. All right. Thanks for serving there, Marvin. All in favor? And that is carried. Be it resolved that the Discovery Nature Sanctuary meeting minutes of February 17th, 2021 be received for information. Mover? Henry Siemens. Seconder. Karina. Any questions regarding those minutes? Looks like they still have money they want to spend. I love being able to read up on all of the different yeah. things that they're doing. I yeah. love, they are a very active group, that's for sure. Okay, any other comments? None, all in favor? And that is carried. One thing, Henry, before you sign those planning minutes, the in-camera meeting, can you just adjust that I left after item one in the March 11th? Absolutely. One? I can remind you after. All right. Therefore, be it resolved that this media council recess for the purpose of holding public hearings. Mover? Marvin. Seconder? Michael. All in favor? And that is carried. I'm going to uh, step out at this point. Okay. Proceed, Carl. Noted, Andrew stepped out. Uh, Jody, proceed. Okay, so uh, we have a number of public hearings today, so I'm just going to say a few things about how the process will work for tonight. Uh, Mayor Harder will begin by asking those registered to speak at the public hearing in the order that they register. Uh, the mayor does have the right to limit time to 10 minutes. When it is your turn, we will ask that you come up to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and then you may speak to the matter. All questions or comments from the public must be directed to the mayor from the podium. After all registrants have been heard, the mayor will call for any others who wish to come forward. If there are none, the public hearing on that item will be closed, and council will then vote on motions related to the public hearing. Uh, for some of you, when you finish your presentation, you may be asked to watch from the lobby to make room for others. 
And for those watching from the lobby, we'll invite you into council chambers when those inside have finished their presentation to council. So with that, we'll begin the first public hearing. And this is in regards to bylaw number 2266-21. And this is a rezoning uh, for the development that we refer to as the gardens. It is in the uh, northwest corner of town. Closer to your mic, I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay. And um, there, there's a map attached to the public notice that was sent out. So we're ch changing zoning from CR community reserve to RS residential single family, RT residential two family, and OR, which is open space recreation zone. We have not received any written objections for this application. Uh, but we have received some notes from Manitoba Infrastructure. Uh, they've made two notes. One has to do with uh, traffic concerns that may be generated from this development. And they're asking the developer to provide some preliminary traffic projections. They're also asking for written confirmation for uh, a drainage issue to make sure that that is addressed. Uh, but they have no concerns with the proposal. And so, these don't have to, or the, the bylaw can still be approved uh, as long as those concerns are addressed in the development agreement. Okay, I will ask if there's anybody in the lobby that is here to speak to bylaw number 2266-21. So this particular issue, I don't see anybody maybe ask again if there's anybody out there that uh, is wanting to speak to this bylaw number 2266-21. I don't see anybody that uh, is here to speak to that. Uh, I'm not sure, John, if you want to speak to it or you. It's all explained. Okay. All right. If there's no objectors and nobody needing to speak to this one, uh, be it resolved that this public hearing for bylaw number 226621 be closed. Do we have a mover? John. A seconder? Marvin. All in favor? And that's carried. Maybe ask Councillor Fraze to come back in. Hmm? Oh, we'll do, sorry, we need to uh, second reading for rezoning. Be it resolved that by all, oh, sorry, all in favor? That's carried. <laughs> okay, we'll get through this. Be it resolved that bylaw 226621 be given second reading. Mover? Michael. Seconder? Karina. Martin. Oh, you Karina. can have it. Okay, Karina, thank you. All in favor? And that is carried. Yep, yep, I'm just going down here. Here we are. Okay. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2266-21 be given third reading, subject to the development agreement. Terms and conditions of the development agreement will be in accordance with the recommendations made in the city's report to council. Mover? Henry Siemens. Seconder? Marvin. Any last questions? Hearing none, all in favor? That is carried. Thank you, gentlemen. <clears throat> Going on to the next public hearing. So we have a public hearing now for variation application number 1666-21. Applicant is Ed Penner Construction on behalf of owner Icon Technologies. And the location is 925 Roblin Boulevard East. The zoning bylaw requires a 49.2 foot max driveway width. The variation requested is for a 24 foot wide driveway with flares. The reason is in order to construct a new driveway access to an expanded parking lot consistent with existing access. So we've not received any objections to this application. 
uh, you can refer to your shared notes. There's some notes in there about the driveway with actually being about 24 foot, but they have flares uh, for better access that make it wider. And so there's no concerns from the planning and engineering department for this application. Any concerns from council? No concern, therefore be it resolved, this public hearing for variation number 166621 be closed. Mover? On. Okay, Karina and on. Any last questions? Hearing none, all in favor? It's carried. Be it resolved that council approve variation number 1666-21. Mover? Henry Siemens. A seconder. Don. Any questions? All in favor? And that is carried. Approved. Going on to the next public hearing, 1669-20, 470 Southview Drive. Yep, this is a variation application and the applicant is Pinnacle Inc. on behalf of owners Brad and Phyllis Duick. Address is 470 Southview Drive. The zoning bylaws require a 25 year, a 25 foot rear yard setback. And the variation requested is for a five foot rear yard setback. It's in order to allow the construction of an addition to the house towards the east. And we have not received any objections to this application. And the Duicks were planning to come out and couldn't make it because of the road conditions. Uh, but they were uh, prepared to come to the hearing as well. Uh, the Planning and Engineering Department recommends approval if there are no objections. Anybody here with any objections for that particular project? None there? None in the lobby. Oh, I don't see anybody, no. <clears throat> be it resolved that the public hearing for the variation 1669-20 be closed. Mover? Michael. Seconder? Harvin. Any Harvin, last yeah. questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Our fire department's had an opportunity to look at that and have no concerns either. The department aware? So the actual um, rear yard orients the neighboring side yard. Correct. So um, from a building permit standpoint, they will be required to take out a building permit. And so MSTW will evaluate the fire guard protection required to meet uh, fire and building standards. So no concerns in that regard. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Stephanie. All right, any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor? And that is carried. Be it resolved that council approve variation number 1669-20. Mover? Henry Siemens. Seconder? Don. Thank you. Any last questions? Hearing none, all in favor? And that is carried. Next public hearing is in regard to 7th Street Project, bylaw number 2263-21, 2264-21, conditional use 1661-21, variation 1662-21, 1663-21. Jody? Okay, as the mayor mentioned, this is a public hearing for multiple um, uses. We have a lane closure, rezoning, a conditional use, and two variations. And so I'll go through um, an overview of each of the uh, applications and then we can carry on from there. So the first one is for bylaw 2263-21, which is to close a portion of the public lane located between 7th and 8th Street in Winkler, in the city of Winkler. And the legal address is described there. There's also a map. And this is for an area that is located between Mountain Avenue and South Railway Avenue. And that is the location for all of the following ones that we'll be talking about. Secondly, we have a bylaw 2264-21, which is for rezoning in the same location from RS, residential single family zone, to RM, residential multifamily zone. 
Then we have a conditional use application number 1661-21. Applicant is K-Block Developments on behalf of owners Harville Homes, Sunco Development Group, Morden Condo Corporation, and K-Block Developments. Same address as has been previ previously mentioned. And this is for a, the reason for this uh, conditional use is that a planned unit development is a conditional use development. <laughs> And so the request is in order to construct two four-story residential condo buildings as a phased residential planned unit development. Then we have variation application 1662-21, same applicant and owners. Here the zoning bylaws require 45,000 square foot site area. The variation requested is for 27,602. It also requires uh, 35 dwelling units per acre this variation is for 59.3 dwelling units per acre. Same reason for the request. And then we have the last one, which is variation application 1663-21. Again, same applicant on behalf of the same owners. The zoning bylaws require a 25 foot front yard minimum. Variation request is for a 17 foot front yard. And the bylaw requires 45 foot maximum building height or three stories, whichever is lesser. The variation requested is for 45 foot four story buildings. So these public notices were circulated and, and uh, advertised as required by the acts. Uh, we sent information to various agencies, provincial community planning, Manitoba Hydro, Bell MTS, Manitoba Infrastructure and MSTW Planning District and no agencies expressed any concerns with the proposal. We did, however, receive three written objections. So I, those objections have been attached for council to view prior to the meeting. I will just highlight a few uh, points from each of the letters. Uh, one letter comes from the Covenant Mennonite Church, which is located at 363 8th Street South. Uh, their congregation does not oppose the multi-unit development uh, to the east of their church property. Uh, they are, however, opposing the sale of the back lane. And so they're here to present, and so I'll leave the rest for them to, to present when that time comes. Secondly, we received a letter from Kathleen Bergen, who is also present here today. She lives at 387th Street, right next to the proposed development. And she's opposed also to each of the variations and the bylaws. And so, yeah, that the objections have to do with population density, uh, the increase from three to four stories, the change in frontage, uh, the private lane closing. Um, and then there's some other concerns that have to do with parking, access to private property, security, privacy, drainage, tra and traffic. A few others that you can note in the letter and she will be here to present as well. Third letter came from Clarence and Ruth Dick at 392 7th Street and they will not be present here today but they did state in their letter that they're also objecting to all of the variances and the bylaws and so again there I think I will leave it on that unless there are questions as you've all had a chance to take a look at those letters. Okay, from the list that I have here, uh, starts off with Abe and Tina Neufeld. Are they also objecting to this property? Are they present? Are Abe and Tina Neufeld present? Sorry? There's a... Okay. Okay. What I want to do is I, I I want to go through the uh, the uh, list of objectors based on the registrations coming in. So Abe and Tina Newfeld would be the first one, and then after that would be the Covenant Mennonite Church. Okay. So Abe and Tina, if they would come in and state their their concerns and. Uh, I will limit the presentations to 10 minutes per presenter. 
uh, I would like to ask that a representative of the individuals uh, do the speaking, if at all possible, so that we don't duplicate what, what we're going through. But uh, so somebody, either Abe or Tina Neufeld, uh, if you want to come and do your presentation, it'd be great. Well, you, well, you can both come stand here as you yeah. come on up to the podium here. Or did you not want to speak to the group? Okay. Like where they're going to build it, it's right in our backyard, and we lose all our privacy and everything. So it would be a big loss for us like, if that happened. Okay. Is that your, your concern? Yes. Okay. I will mark that down. Do we, Thank uh, you. Dana, could you have the address? Could you give us just your address, please? It's 726 South Railway. Thank you. Okay, so the concern of Abe and Tina Neufeld was in regards to the removal of privacy that they have in their own backyard. So thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, the, the, the next one that we'll be making a presentation, what I'd like to do, we we'll want to go through these. We'll take some notes as to what the concerns are, and then we'll give the developer an opportunity to address uh, the concerns as we go through. And then after that, we'll have uh, council given an opportunity to ask questions or what, whatever uh, comments there are. So thank you for your presentation. And stick around, no problem. Uh, you sit back out in the lobby if you like. Uh, and uh, presentation regards to the Covenant Church. I'm not sure who your spokesperson is, but and if you would state your name and address. My name is Doug Dick. I'm uh, representing Covenant Church this evening. And people present in the delegation are Rita Weeb, Dave Stobie, and Pastor Kevin Drudge. Covenant would like to thank Winkler City Council for keeping us informed and giving us this opportunity to voice our concerns. We believe we have good relations with our neighbors and we wish to continue on that journey. We believe we have and want a healthy neighborhood. As such, several of our congregants have had uh, phone conversations with Frank and this delegation that is presently here met with Frank and John on Friday on our site. Most unfortunately, we had never heard or been consulted about this development, and the first we heard of this proposed development was by, via your letter informing us of tonight's meeting. As a result, our congregation has had very little time to process this development and its impact. However, we have met briefly a couple of times. We at Covenant Church are not opposed to developments and indeed acknowledge the need for them. After having studied the development proposal, however, we have a few general concerns and a few very specific concerns uh, that we would like to voice here. First, a little history. The city of Winkler is well known for its many churches and our church building has been a part of that history for approximately 100 years, probably should even be considered a heritage building. Covenant Mennonite purchased this facility in 1997 from the Lutheran congregation and we have been worshiping there since then. Prior to COVID, we rented our facilities to two other congregations and now one uh, after COVID with a minimum of four services per week. We rented out to music teachers and also to concerts that were held in conjunction with the music teachers' instructions. And we also rented out to a ladies' support group that is not connected to our church. In other words, our little facility is a very busy little place. So here are our general concerns. We have two of them. We are concerned about the significant increase in population density this development would bring, and related to that, we feel that inadequate green space is being provided for. Number two, we are concerned about parking congestion during overlap of concert hall events and church events and family gathering holidays. Is there sufficient parking space for visitors and event attenders to be accommodated? 
And we know that when the concert hall was being rented out to another church, there was quite a bit of overlap and we sometimes had a fight for parking space because we were they were overlapping into what we thought was our territory, even though it's public domain. Then we would like to talk about two specific concerns that affect us as a church directly. Our church does not have a parking lot per se. Our only parking is along 8th Street and along the, alongside the north and east sides of the church with access via the city's back lanes to the north and east. With five of our congregants needing wheelchairs or other assist devices, we try to keep the street in, directly in front of our church open for those people and the rest of us park on the north or east side. The development's purchase of the east lane would make access very difficult. While Frank suggested a modification to their parking plan whereby we would be able to access uh, the east side of our property via their property, I know a caveat would be required and the parking range would not give us the desired results. Parking is a going concern and we presume will be more so in the future. Our renting, our renting congregation members have large families and their vehicle of choice is the minivan. The Lutheran church before us poured a concrete curb on the east side of our church using it for parking, and we have continued that practice. Number two, our church has expressed concerns about the lack of Sunday school space and discussions have been had trying to determine a solution for that problem. The loss of the east corridor could hinder any possible decision to drop in a standalone hut, for example, with already limited parking space. So, we have a three-point proposal here. And let me first use, uh, say, this is my personal statement here. I find it disappointing, personally, that a development would seem to be able to find the solution to a parking problem for their development by infringing on the parking space of an establishment that is right next door. And to me, it almost feels like that. But I say that's my personal feeling on that one. But we as a church said that K-Block be asked to modify their proposal so that they no, no longer have need of the east lane, which would have a secondary impact and that Manitoba Hydro need not move their power line, just as a little sub-point. Number two, our first choice would be that past and current history stand and Covenant Manor Church be allowed to continue to access both the north and east side of our properties for parking via the city's very generous permission to use the two lanes as is currently the practice. Number three, if our first choice no longer is an option, however, and that is if we can use it as, as currently is being done, since we were never made aware that the lane was even up for sale, we, Covenant Mennonite Church, be given first opportunity to purchase the East Lane so we can annex it to our property to enhance our future. We are hereby offering to purchase that East Lane. On behalf of Covenant Mennonite Church, I want to thank you. Thank you, Doug. Okay, uh, the next registrant would be Suzanne Lowen and Harv Lowen. Who's this? Suzanne, you're the speaker? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Chairpersons, Council, Committee members. And interestingly, just in terms of the opportunity to speak to you regarding the application for the variation of bylaw 1938-08 and bylaw 2264-21. I'm representing my husband, Scott. I'm just going to move this down because I'm short. Okay, you'll have to speak right into the mic. Right into so the mic. Here. Yep, thank okay. you. I'm representing my husband, Scott, and myself, Suzanne Lowen, today. We are property owners of 345 8th Street and are adjacent to the west side of the city back lane in question. Scott is not able to be here tonight as he is a healthcare worker at Salem Home and is working the late evening shift tonight. I have with me my father-in-law who's in the other room, who is a citizen of Winkler as well, and he's here as my support. Um, let me begin by stating that we have been taxpaying citizens of Winkler in our present location for 24 years. We chose to buy property and raise our family in Winkler when we first were married. Living downtown, 
close to an elementary school, which is within walking distance from a park, a pool, a grocery shopping, was ideal for a young couple starting out. We could be a single family home, a single vehicle family, and get to work, etc., using our bicycles or walking as alternative modes of transportation. Which in Winkler, that's about all you have is alternative or alternative on transportation. Um, we have invested into our home over the years, making a 75 year old house and yard viable for today. We have deliberately considered our neighbors and how their daily experience is affected by what we do on the outside of our yard and our house. We have on numerous occasions been the unofficial neighborhood watch. For example, we've prevented a group of curious young people from building a fire underneath the back staircase of the concert hall. I told them that wasn't a good idea to start there. Um, we've called local police at the wee hours of the night to intervene on drug deals taking place on the concert hall parking lot. All this to say that we want to protect not only our investment in our property, but in the daily lives of those in our community. I would like to address a few areas that affect us directly with the proposed variance requests. Uh, number one, our property is a single family home within walking distance of an elementary school. As I already stated, it, was benef it has benefited us greatly as our two children grew up attending K to grade eight in Winkle Elementary School. They were able to be involved in sports, drama, jazz choir, jazz band, all the extracurricular because they could walk. We didn't have a second car to take them places. They attended the high school at GBC, which our location also afforded them the same opportunities. First of all, they were big enough to walk that far. And because we were so close, our property is a value to those would, who would like to experience the same. But the changes proposed would greatly decrease the attractiveness and in turn the value of our home. Uh, number two, the back lane development. We attended the hearing regarding variances for Oakview Terrace about 23 years ago. We understood they requested a variance to build high enough to put in underground parking. We objected to the variance at the time, but it was passed regardless. The back lane was not going to be changed. Now we discovered that the city would like to develop the back lane. We would like to put a garage in our backyard that would require access to a back lane. With the proposed development, this would not be available to us. We believe that we should be given equal opportunity to access this lane for our enjoyment and the use as well as for our pro for our enjoyment and use as well as for another property owner. We would like to have the opportunity to purchase back the back lane if it is for sale, which we only found out the other day. It would benefit us as well. Selling the back lane to the developer of the city has taken any financial gain from us, a long-term resident property owner, and passing it on to the developer. Uh, number three, uh, the height variance requests 45 foot max building height or three stories, whichever is less. This is of great concern to us. When Oakview Terrace received their variance, it already felt like an encroachment on the single family homes on our block. Now a variance request on an already approved variance does not sit well with us. We would like to enjoy some backyard privacy. Another height variance would impede again on our enjoyment and the value of our property. Uh, number four, the density of population is a concern to us by increasing the standard dwellings, 35 dwellings per acre to 59.3 dwelling units. This is a school zone 8th Street from South Railway to Peters Avenue is already packed with teachers parked during the day and parents picking up their kids throughout the day. Concert hall parking on the evening spreads all over 6th, 7th, 8th, Mountain Avenue and beyond. This is a thoroughfare from Park Street to the south end of Winkler. Increasing the population density is not acceptable in a residential area with so many pedestrians. And then number five, I have a couple points with that. Closing the back lane for parking represents problems to us and to our neighborhood. Uh, 5A, we have snow removal becomes an issue. We already struggle with snow clearing operations happening all through the night. 
It's the beeping and the scraping at three in the morning when my husband has to get up to go to work. Um, piling it up on the corner near our property and then taking it away. The density of dwellings, parking lots, and snow removal will be a nightmare for all of us and for all the other residents in the area. And B, parking all around our property. We already have a parking lot on the south side of our property and the proposed drawings that which we've seen now um, would not have parking, the proposed drawings would now have parking at the rear and possibly to the north of the, of the Covenant Church, which if they, you know, if it gets assumed and things like that. So it's just kind of a ball that rolls on. Um, yeah, how would, how would you feel if this was your yard and your life investment and you've lived here that long? And we love living downtown, so. Um, number six, finally, is garbage. <laughs> Popul population density creates garbage. The drawings that we have seen puts the dumpsters for potentially 30 dwellings near the back of our property. This would be a smell invasion that we could not avoid and it would attract rats to our area. It would also attract others to this dumpster for public unregulated deposits. The noise of garbage trucks backing up all the way from the north lane, again with a beeping, all at whatever time suits them best. Garbage dumpsters should have to be inside, just like Oakview Terrace has theirs, and be picked up from 7th Street, where garbage trucks don't have to back up. It would then also be protected from illegal pro public use and would encourage the landlord to monitor it for obnoxious odors. As you can tell, we have great concerns over the potential development of the downtown area. Development should take into consideration all the residents of the area and not just the financial gain of the developers. Because we have property with its roots back to 1901, we would greatly appreciate being considered in the betterment, beauty, and the neighborly progress that Winkler does make. Yes, it is a wonderful place to raise a family and to retire in. Let's please, please keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. I do have a paper copy if you want a copy. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Uh, the next one would be Kathleen Bergen. I'm shorter than her, so. <laughs> Um, I'm Kathleen Bergen. My home is at 387th Street, which is right next door to the north of this proposed development. I purchased my home in 2017, and um, it's right across the street from where I work at the Winkler Senior Center. For me, it's an ideal home for myself, a single lady living with my single adult daughter. It's a nice small place, so I don't have to worry about a lot of a lot of yard work there. Um, I object to the above variation of to the variation of locations in order to construct two four-story condominium buildings. This is a letter I had sent to the city, but I felt like I needed to read it. With a dwelling, a total of dwell, 33 dwelling units for the following reasons: population density, changing the zoning from multifamily to multi. Multiple family to multifamily increases traffic, parking, and an already densely populated area. Especially, there's a lot of senior complexes in the area. Uh, with increased population density, the need for our current services such as water, hydro, sewer, and gas are also increased. Pollution from vehicles, noise, and potentially garbage increase with increasing population density. Currently, our street is well, relatively quiet, but increasing the population significantly will potentially mean the neighborhood will be noisy. As most of the residents currently on this street are seniors, the increase in noise will be an annoyance and or problem. Uh, proposed increase from three to four story. Increasing to four story building increases population density, increasing parking decreases privacy and security. And the bylaw 45 max building height or three stories, whichever is higher should not be changed. Proposed change in frontage decreases my privacy, decreases green space, 
Very limited green space in the area. Green space at Heritage Village is privately owned by them. This building needs to have its own green space, especially if there are young children living in the building. Private lane on west side of building. This lane belongs to the city and therefore to the taxpayers of Winkler. As I'm a taxpayer, I feel this land must be maintained and used as a lane for the public and not sold to a private landowner. This lane should only be sold or remain used for the public as in the church or the concert hall. This proposed building affects the neighborhood and me in the following ways. Parking. There's a severe shortage of parking in this area. Service providers that provide services to seniors in the area, such as home care workers, foot care nurses, etc., already have difficulty finding parking near Buddha Active Living Center, Heritage Village, and Oakview Terrace. Emergency crews responding to calls within Heritage High Rise, the Heritage Manor, and Oakview Terrace park there near their entrances on 7th Street. Employees in the Buller Active Living Center, which includes the Buller Active Living Center, the villages at Buller Active Living Center, Winkler Senior Center, HF Weed Pharmacy, and Harry Studios downtown. The village employs healthcare workers around the clock seven days a week, and Buller Active Living Center employs workers seven days a week as well. A few have assigned parking in the Buller Active Living Center parking lot, but most don't and need street parking. Public events at Boer Active Living Center and Winkler Senior Center all require street parking. These events do happen seven days a week. The majority of visitors to the senior complexes also need street parking. My home is directly north of this proposed develop, development. My concrete driveway is only wide enough for one vehicle. My visitors therefore also need to park on 7th Street. As the proposed buildings will not have enough parking for all the residents and visitors to the building, this will create a situation that makes a severe shortage of parking on 7th Street and South Railway worse. Access to my private property. The lane between the proposed development and my home is the only access to my backyard. With the proposed use of this lane as a driveway to the building's parking lot and garages, it becomes difficult for me to access my backyard entry with a vehicle. As the hydro pulls next to my home, this driveway will make access for service difficult. My gas meter is in my backyard. If service is needed at this meter, access for this service will be difficult as well. Um, I don't like the idea of the driveway being their driveway being only feet from my house. Um, with and I'll continue with that, with what that also <coughs> means for my security. Security for my private property increase in number of people next to my property increases potential for issues with my security. My privacy, as windows will be facing my house, my privacy will be limited outside and inside my home. My kitchen window will face the closest building, thereby potential for residents of the closest suites to the west and north of the building to be able to fit into my home. As windows will be facing my backyard, it will no longer be as private as the highest floors will look right over my fence. Drainage on this street is poor, especially at the end of my driveway. I am concerned that this building and driveway will increase the amount of water on the street, especially in spring or during heavy rain. Also concerned the increased sewer line use will create more issues for drainage of water, especially in front of my driveway. Drainage of water onto my property if lane used for driveway and is not serviced at the right height to prevent this. Drainage from the building during spring thaw or rain would drain into my yard. Uh, increased traffic on 7th Street increases the risk of mishap to other drivers, parked cars, and pedestrians. Increased traffic past and close to my home means increased potential for damage to my home and property, especially if the driveway is next, right next to my yard. Creating a driver for the building parking garages, a lot from the lane between that building and my home that is only wide enough for one vehicle drive through at a time is not adequate. Traffic entering and exit on 7th Street creates a situation where they may try to pass each other on the small lane and get too close to my property and car parked on my driveway. At present, backing off mine and the neighbor's driveway is difficult as there are five places that we have to check for a vehicle turning onto or traveling on 7th Street. 
vehicles exiting from this building onto 7th would increase this to six places to watch for and increase the traffic. For those exiting onto 7th Street from this building and the Brewer Active Living Center, this is and will also be an issue. There should not be an entry and exit onto 7th Street. Traffic volumes will be too high, especially with the number of seniors that are driving in the area. Traffic to and from proposed buildings shining lights into my home and potentially into my bedroom window on the west side of my house. Snow clearing next to my home, concerned with accumulation that would be there because of improper cleaning of snow of property driveway. Renters of condominiums, renters are very less likely to care for the area they live in or the homes that they're living in. Uh, market values, concerned that this project will de decrease the value of neighboring homes in future years, particularly during the construction phase. There was a number of things I outlined for construction that I was concerned about, blocking of the street, which it creates more parking issues, and also uh, creating uh, problems for deliveries to Buller Active Living Center or for the EMS. Noise, garbage and pollution, property values, interference with services and damage to private property. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. Uh, I've got Elizabeth Enns and Peter Suderman. Either one of them, okay, Elizabeth. Oakview Terrace, right? Thank you. Okay, hi, Betty. Now, now I re now I can recognize you. Can I do this? Yeah, please. Thank you. <laughs> Just maybe put the mic up a little bit higher so that you can. There you go. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for this opportunity to uh, present to you as a council this today, um, and. Your paper stated that it was Oakview Terrace, condominium, Morton Condominium Number 24, Oakview Terrace, also requesting the rezoning. It actually is not. Uh, we have resolved the issue of the few feet that Harville Homes, K Block, and Suncor want. So we are not asking for the rezoning. Uh, and then, uh, just to introduce myself, I'm, like you said, Elizabeth Enns, and I'm a resident of Opia Terrace on 310 7th Street. And I'm <laughs> representing the residents. So tonight I wanna to bring to your attention our concern regarding the development of the four-story condo complex built, hoping to be built uh, on 7th Street as it is currently planned. First of all, as you heard from any number of other presenters, parking and the added traffic is a big concern and has the potential to devalue our property if and when selling our condos that we currently own. There are already four senior housing complexes on 7th Street, Heritage Manor, High Rise, the Buller Center, and Ophia Terrace, and all need this street for our visitors to park. So parking on 7th Street already at times precludes visitors from parking. The residents of these complexes have all contributed to the taxes. First, where they resided, raised their children and worked and now pay taxes to the town of Winkler directly or pay through their rental fees to the corporation who owns these complexes while they res reside in them. They unquestioningly pay their taxes and have earned the right not to be inundated with added traffic noise, making it difficult for their visitors to park. Although the argument regarding parking could be made, just park on another street or another place and walk to the building you want to enter, I ask that in all your planning discussions, please recognize it's imperative to take into consideration 
that many of the visitors themselves are not able to walk long distances. Visitors, as often as not, are of the older generation supporting and caring for one another through visitations. So privacy of owners is another issue. If a four-story condo building is allowed, the residents of the condo, when looking out their window, look directly onto the backyards of the private home sitting north of the driveway running from 8th Street to 7th Street. This means that all homeowners' privacy is gone. And this is no minor violation of these homeowners' rights to privacy. So those are the four things I want to speak about on regard, in regards to Oakview Terrace. So it's parking, the added traffic, property devaluation, and privacy. That is our concern. And now I want to just speak on my behalf of myself. And please don't see this as a criticism. Rather, consider it something for your consideration. I question why the town of Winkler needs to have every space developed to generate more revenue for development corporations and tax revenue for the town. Why not consider developing this space that is under consideration for rezoning as rezoning it for a green space to beautify this area where the PWNs Hall stands and as a green space for the residents of the many condos on 7th Street who dutifully continue to pay copious taxes to the town of Winkler. Further, I ask that the town of Winkler seriously consider naming the Lutheran Church Building on 8th Street, which is currently used by Covenant Church as a heritage site. This building has been part of the town of the Winkler of community since 1917. That's now 100 years plus and as such deserves to be named a heritage site. And as such, seek to develop the space connecting Covenant Church, PW Anse Hall, and Oakview Ter Terrace area, and develop it into a welcoming green space rather than rezoning to accommodate another condo complex which presently is being considered, and each of the people who have spoken to it have grave concerns about. Rather than removing the trees that are there, groom them and nurture those trees, not cut them down. And again, the argument could be made that there are enough green spaces in our town for people to access. There are any number. And Heritage Manor has their own green space, but it happens to be a private space for their own residents. And given the age of the people and the density of the senior tax-paying citizen population living on 7th Street, including Heritage Manor, the High Rise, Buller Center, Oakview Terrace, Lions Court, and Lions Manor, the town's green spaces are too far removed for those who walk poorly and others who are not able to walk at all for various health reasons or need the use of a walker. So I respectfully submit these concerns and ask for your consideration of these proposals. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. And thank you to everybody who has made a presentation in regards to this development. Appreciate it very much. Very good points made. And I'll ask the developer, Frank, uh, from K-Block, to, uh, to maybe address some of these issues or uh, give, give us your perspective. 
Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to to present um, to you this project. Uh, you know, I really appreciate all the feedback, all the comments that have been made. It is not at all my intention to wreck neighborhoods. That that's not. I have a passion for development, to build up community, not not to tear it down. That is not at all my intention, or to invade privacy, not our intention. Right. I have a passion for development. I enjoy what I do. I think we have a great team that we can hey, build. Frank, would you just uh, pull up the mic and speak right mm -hmm. into it? They can't hear you in the back there. Oh. Thanks. There, is that better? That's better, okay. thanks. <laughs> so as I was saying, it's, it's not my intent at all to wreck any development or anybody's uh, community area or their home or privacy. Uh, like I said, I have a passion for building. I enjoy it, it's, it's what I do. I think we have a, a great team. Um, and uh, I will take these, these, these comments here very seriously. It really helps for me to grow in my understanding of building community, it helps me to, to become a better developer. So thank you for, for all of those, those comments and concerns. Uh, our intention here is to develop condominium units for purchase in downtown Winkler. It's a very attractive area. It's within walking distance to a lot of services such as the post office, groceries, um, banks, and, and so on. Right. It's also a, a an area where people could live and, and walk to work. Um, both of these buildings that are proposed um, would have elevators and would attract or lend, lend well to, to 55 plus or senior housing. Um, so they'd have elevators, they'd have indoor parking, one indoor stall per suite owner. Acquiring the, uh, the uh, north-south lane would allow for additional visitor parking. Proposed, as you can see on the site plan, it would add about 18 visitor parking stalls. Now, given the, the um, concerns that were expressed by the Covenant Church for, for parking, I, I really respect that. I think that we could rework our plan and leave the back lane as a lane. Currently, it's, use, it, it's not being used as a through road. Uh, it's, it's overgrown with shrubs and, and some trees. And, and I believe the Covenant Church does use uh, the, the north corner to access the back of their property. Um, so, yeah, given the concerns, I think we could rework the plan and leave the lane as is. And if, if, if the, you know, that way each property owner could continue to use that. Uh, the proposed building height, setbacks, and density, I feel is consistent with the project to the south, the Oakview Terrace, uh, where the initial plan of the previous developer was to extend to the north another 18 suites. I believe they got another conditional approval back in 2012. Um, to put 15 feet between buildings. Nevertheless, it's the previous developer has approached us and uh, asked if we had an interest in developing it further. That's the reason for our proposed plans. Um, I, had I had met with uh, some of the, the uh, members from the Covenant Church who did propose you know, a shared access from the lane and, and maybe lose a parking stall or two so that they could continue to have access from the back. Um, again, there would be a caveat that would need to be registered. I, I, I don't, hearing, hearing the concerns and, and that the building is already over a hundred years old, I really, that's, that's, a, that's very important. I, I wouldn't want to wreck that. So I think leaving the lane may be, may be the better option. Uh, so that it can continue to provide access to the back should they want to develop that as a parking lot. Having said that, I, I do, like I said, I like to build condominium units and offer them for sale or for, for lease. Um, in this area, it would 
allow people to purchase a unit and live downtown Winkler. There isn't a whole lot available downtown to purchase. Uh, there is more on the outskirts of town, but right now I feel that this would provide a need. However, given all these concerns expressed, I, I'm not sure what to say, you know. Um, I have to hand it to you as council. You, you do need to consider everyone, right? Not, not just the, the uh, one person or just the developer or just one homeowner, but you're, you're um, planning a community. You're, you're regulating what's going to be built and how is it going to impact the future of Winkler. So I really respect the work and effort that you put into it. And just thank you for considering this. I accept the outcome. So I trust you with your decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Okay, are there any other people that have registered to make presentations or any questions of council for clarification? Open, open for council to participate and ask questions if you would like, for either from residents or the church representatives or, or Frank, the developer. When was OQ Terrace constructed? 1998. 98? Okay. Were these concerns brought forward as well at that point? No idea. I wasn't here. What? I've never had <laughs> I've this been here before. forever. <laughs> <laughs> you thought this I was here forever. First. Yeah, this right. <laughs> Sorry. Jody, do you know if there were any concerns? Or if he, he wasn't here either. No, I'm, I know that. <laughs> I'm not aware. No, I'm not aware. Sorry. Well, how about the Buehler building? Was there concerns about when the Buehler building was built? I don't think so. Not that I'm aware of. So I can't comment on OQ Terrace. We'd, we'd have to refer back to the council minutes of the day. Uh, but I actually looked up the Bueller public hearing uh, council minutes uh, just today, just thinking it might come up. Uh, there was, just looking at the minutes, there weren't a lot of comments. There was one individual who came forward uh, the only comment or question that that person posed was the time frame uh, regarding the construction of the Bueller Center. So a public hearing was held, I believe it was July 23rd, 2013. July, maybe not 23rd, but for sure it was July 2013. Uh, at that point in time, the Bueller uh, was uh, challenging the height variation and also a conditional use because um, residential wasn't... Uh, I think allowed in the or multifamily was being challenged uh, in the CC zone. So I believe that uh, just comments on the, the Bueller. And just Thank one you. other note, uh, one of the other presenters, Suzanne Lowen, had mentioned that she was present for the Oakview Terrace and objected to the variances right. at that time. And not for the Bueller one, those. Not Bueller, that yeah. was for Oakview. Yeah. Well, I know, sorry, go ahead, Doug. Could I just make one slight um, comment to Frank's one statement? Sure, please step up to the mic so they can hear you out there. Oh, sorry. Okay. I just want to respond to a comment you made about we were using only a part of that back section for parking. I will say this, just for clarification's sake, um, the back alley as it stands right now has, there's, there's uh, a hedge that's growing there, and... In amongst that hedge, I believe, are a couple of volunteer trees that have sprouted up, and they are leaning more and more onto our property, or on not onto our property, but on over your lane, which restricts us being able to park there. But we have never done anything with it because it's not our property. It wasn't our hedge, and so we didn't feel we had the right to trim it if it was in our property or if it was maintained. We would trim that away so that we would have greater access to the back of our parking lot. So um, that was just for clarification. Okay, thank you. And the you. other one is if you wanted the written, my written report, sure. I have that Sure, as well. that'd be good. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. Can I ask um, yep. regarding, um, sorry? Am I talking enough? Like I'm almost eating. Um, I'm just wondering on the clarification on who does the snow removal right now on the back lane. And if we are not uh, maintaining that back lane, then who is? And if you are maintaining that, or if he's maintaining, if the church is maintaining the front part, um, is that something that we're looking to continue here? 
How long has that been going on? Well, Scott, you can probably help answer this. So my understanding is the back lane, the city doesn't use it other than servicing the utilities that are buried in it. That was the reason why it came up. Well, do we really need it or do we need to just simply continue having access to the services that are buried underneath uh, that back lane? So, I think as Doug has already mentioned, I don't believe there is any servicing of that back lane whatsoever. Right. To my knowledge, it functions as a right of way, Correct. not as a lane. Right. Correct. But Karina is asking if anybody does do any no. clearing. Unless so the church uh, does some for parking. We have done clearing when we require that for, for parking. We've had a first, John Thiessen, who used to live directly to the north across the lane from our place, and mm -hmm. just moved recently, but he was the person who did all the snow clearing, and we just used a walk behind snow blower. Uh, once or twice in the last couple of years, we haven't had much snow, but we brought in a, a big, big unit to, to clear the walk. So it's been, we've done it because that was access to our backyard. Okay, thank you. State your name. My name's Dave Stoby. I'm with the church, but I also live in the K-Block development at Roblin Estates. And I found, thank you, Frank, for being so gracious in your response to us. If all properties had the nice amenities that Roblin Estates has, grass, gardens, gazebo, play structure, we wouldn't have these squabbles. Thank you. Thank you. So he does know how to build proper developments. And lots of compliments, Frank, in that regard. And I know that that's one of the reasons why we even entertain this option, because you have a pretty decent history of, uh, of developing. So that's why we're here today, wanting to listen to the community. All right, if there's no further, uh, Marvin? And just, uh, just a comment or a question maybe for Frank. Uh, the privacy issue came up uh, from a number of people. Is there something that, that, uh, that you've thought about uh, in terms of how to address that? Oh. Privacy, I know I can't, with the, given the height, I mean, our building height is proposed as 45 feet, as I was saying, is consistent with Oakview Terrace. There would be balconies facing to the west and to the east. On the east side, there's plenty of, you know, there's the, the, the Seventh Street going past there, and then is the higher buildings to the east, so there isn't an issue there. To the west, there is that one residential property that the balconies would overlook the backyard. And, and yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to address that. To the uh, north, however, we would be set back also 15 feet from the lane, plus there is the lane. And then there is the two um, properties, or actually all the properties on South Railway would be affected. I think there's five, four or five neighbors there. Um, we would have some narrower windows, more bedroom windows that would be facing to the north. Um, I mean, yeah, they, they could look out there and, and invade the privacy of the neighboring to the north. How to address that, I, that's one of the difficult things in design, right? Is that as soon as you're building up, you're, you're opposing some areas, right? You just, you can't accommodate each of the areas. So, okay. yeah, I do think that given the space between the two buildings would allow some sunlight to come through to the to the Eighth Street property, as opposed to adding on to the Oakview Terrace. Yeah. Have, can okay. I ask? Karina, yes. Have we had any complaints? Have we heard any complaints from residents around Oakview? If this is planned, if this is supposed to be the same height as Oakview. Right. Are there any, have we had any formal complaints from Oak or neighboring residents? I'm not aware of any uh, complaints that have come to City Hall okay. in that regard. Okay. And I wonder okay. if they maybe did anything particular like narrowing the windows as well or whatever. There's lots of opportunity. People <clears throat> have bathroom windows that they block somehow, right? Like there's ways around it maybe. 
Mayor, may I just, yes, for please. point of clarification, just having seen the development plan, Frank, perhaps you could speak to a few of the other objections that you've tried to address um, in terms of, there was some mentioned about drainage and sewer usage and density, which are all related issues. Would you be able to speak to that just a bit? So the, um, what was the first one you mentioned? Uh, the drainage and sewer capacity. Okay, so drainage, we would be getting an engineer involved to, to design that for us so that it would meet the, the standards or approval of the, the city planning. Um, the uh, sewer drainage, like the, 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 the gray water we could collect and we could propose a system that Scott and I talked about. Uh, it's called a gray water system where we would collect all of the, the sewage from showers into a system and filter it and then reuse that water for, for toilets, uh, for flushing and so on. So that would reduce the, the drainage leaving the building. So it would help with that. Does it solve the issue at hand? I'm not sure what the issue at hand is, what, 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 what's available on the town sewers, right? But it would definitely reduce it probably between 20 and 30% of, of water usage for one and also drainage leaving, yeah. right? I, th I think for, the for big issue was groundwater drainage. I think the the groundwater drainage we, we would have to design an engineer would have to design something that would whether we retain the storm or or you know how to how to relieve the uh, water flow or limit it right. So whether that's via storage under the under the parking lane or or how we'd have to get an engineer involved to do that. We'd be willing to do that, but yeah, Does that answer. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, one last one. So Frank, I did understand you saying twice that you thought maybe leaving the lane would be advisable. Is that correct? Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. All right, I think we've exhausted uh, all of the questions and uh, some there are some answers, not all of them. Obviously there's some work that uh, may need to be done yet, but for the purpose of this hearing, uh, be it resolved that the public hearing for bylaw 2263-21, bylaw 2264-21, Conditional use 1661-21, variation 1662-21, and variation 1663-21 be closed. Do you have a mover? Karina. And a seconder? Andrew. Thank I'd you. Ask, uh, a question if I could. By closing the hearing, we then debate these and make a decision on, is there any opportunity if we wanted to, based on the new information that's come in, if we wanted to uh, dive in deeper into some of these, is there an opportunity to recess the hearing or to adjourn the hearing and finish it? So, or what's sure, our the opera, or the options available to council at this point would be one, to adjourn the public hearing and announce the date and time of the next public hearing. The reasons that you could do that would be if new information has come to light or if there may be new information that could be made available. And so uh, if that is the course of action, then council would not be allowed to discuss it with one another or anyone in the public until the next public hearing where further information could be presented. If that is the choice of council, then the following uh, resolutions would be uh, tabled and we would not go through them. If the other option is to close the hearing you then need to make decisions on all of the resolutions before you. Is that Can clear? I? Can I ask? Yes, absolutely. Um, regarding the change now with the back lane, if that's a potential change, um, does that change this application then? So if you defeat the resolution, say you close the hearing and defeat the resolution on the uh, 
closure of the lane, then you could go ahead with the rezoning and the conditional use, but you would have to defeat the two variations because they would need to be new applications with different um, parameters to them. So that is an that would be an option is to to defeat that. You could approve or defeat the rezoning and the conditional use, but then you if you close the lane, you have to defeat the variations because the the circumstances will change. So the other option I was just curious about if this if we deferred the closing as an example and deferred it to the next council meeting, would it give us an option then to be able to look at some of these, more clearly look at some of these concerns and discuss them with the developer to figure out how those could be addressed? Or I, I think your better option would be to adjourn the public hearing, ask the developer to prepare information and the staff to um, bring their review of the, of the uh, objections but just let me confer a little bit. Do you guys are in agreement with that? Okay. So, okay. Because my concern was if there's some changes that can be made that addresses the issues that we don't make the developer then go through another complete application, I'd rather, I'd rather allow that conversation to take place with staff to try to address it and then continue the public hearing at the next meeting. Is that possible? If if we if we adjourn the public hearing, there, under, according to the act, there can't be discussion from council. There can be only the preparation of information that we can bring to the continuation of the public hearing. So that's why one option. If if you were intending to close the lane, you could do that it's the variations that would have to come back for new public hearings. And I think just to follow up on Martin's comment, is there a way to recess the hearing to allow our staff and the developer right. and the community to have those conversations and then to come back to the next hearing or to our next meeting mm -hmm. yes. with a continuation of it with something recognizing that council can't be involved in that discussion, right. Yes, but that staff, the developer okay. and the public could be. Yes. So that would, that be, would be something that, that would be I would agree with that. as well. Yeah. Councillor? Yep. I'm good with okay, that. Okay. So how do we word that then? So then we it? will change the resolution to the closing of the hearing that therefore be it resolved that council adjourn the public hearing until April 27th at 6.45 p.m. Okay. 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 Do if we, we do that, we do not have to circulate public notice. Uh, we will make sure that as long well, if some people have left, we will make sure that everyone who attended the public hearing is given notice that we made this decision to adjourn and that it will be continued April 26th. If that's your wish, it could be a different date, but. Is that enough time? Yeah. Okay. Mm. And Frank, are you okay with that? So it would basically be a deferral of a month? That would be May 11th. May 11th meeting? And at that meeting, just correct me if I'm wrong, there's no further input, but there's a, a presentation then dealing with the changes and then ask for input. Yeah, the, the public hearing essentially would continue. Right. Okay, so Frank could present information, public could <clears throat> make okay. comment. So what I would recommend then, as far as setting it for then, I would like to give Frank the first opportunity to present his new proposal and then allow the public to weigh back in based on the information provided at that council meeting. And for us as council, we will not get involved for the next month discussing this, this with anybody, but rather just deferring it for a month and allow uh, Frank and our staff to be able to discuss and deal with some of these challenges that are here and then come back a month from now at our council meeting and then for Frank to be able to present his new proposal and uh, deal with it at that meeting. Correct. And Frank would have opportunity to talk yes. again with mm -hmm. neighbors. And, mm -hmm. Yep. But as council, we won't be involved. Okay. No. <laughs> Don't want to show our biases or whatever. That's not the, that's not the point. And we so want to make sure we comply. Just to re reiterate and for clarity, 
Therefore, it be resolved that council adjourn the public hearing until May, Tuesday, May 11th at 6.45 p.m. Okay, do we have a mover? Henry Marvin. Siemens. Henry and Marvin seconded it, great. And the voice of council, all in favor? All in favor. And that's you now, oops, yeah. Are, are you voting? No. You're abstaining? Okay, so duly noted. And it's carried. So we won't deal with any of the other issues that are on there. We don't have a youth council member represented here today. And so therefore, I think we are to the point of adjournment. Wendy, questions? Wendy? No media questions? No. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, thank you very much for your input. This, we have a motion this, this is really an example yeah. Yeah. of what these public hearings are for. They're here to make the community a better place to live. Absolutely. And that's what I want to reiterate here again today. Each and every voice that is here needs to be heard. Sometimes it doesn't go the way we want it to go, but sometimes we can make a difference as to what the future looks like. So for that, I thank every one of you for coming. And therefore, I will now uh, be it resolved that this regular meeting of council be adjourned. Mover? Andrew. Andrew and Karina. Okay, Andrew and Karina. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you for coming. Thank you.